when you find yours, your blessing, your thing, your purpose, make sure you know it too. Because if you don't open your eyes and realize, damn, this thing that um kind of sort of good at that I don't really pay attention to because I take it for granted, that's my thing. I should double down on that and really cherish and, and nurture it. What up, what up, folks? What's going on? Welcome to the Spun Today podcast, the podcast that is anchored in writing, but unlimited in scope. I'm your host, Tony Ortiz, and I appreciate you listening. This is episode 173 of the Spun Today podcast. And in this episode, I share my October, November, December 2020 writing stats and my January 2021 writing stats. It's been a while since I've recorded a free writing session episode, clearly. I also share a writing tip that I picked up along the way, and I tell you a little bit about what I've been reading. I also read and reflect on one of my free writing pieces, which can be found at spuntoday.com forward slash free writing. And the direct link to the free writing piece that I'll be sharing today will be in the episode notes for your clickable convenience. But first, before we dive into the show, here is one quick way that you can help support the Spun Today podcast if you so choose. For my fellow writers and creatives out there, a really cool way for you to be featured on this show is to respond to my five question Spun Today questionnaire. I'll read your responses on a future episode of the show and share them with the Spun Today community. Think about it. If your responses could potentially spark inspiration in someone else, why not share that? To do so, go to spuntoday.com forward slash questionnaire. Now, my writing stats. I'm going to preface sharing my writing stats by saying and reminding you all that I, I have a newborn baby boy in the house, as you all heard from listening to episode 167, Welcome Baby Grayson, who is three months old going on four months, as well as a two-year-old toddler running around. And I say that because I had atrocious, abysmal writing stats for the past few months. And I know, I know, all of you yelling out, stop making excuses, that's resistance, stop being a pussy, sleep less, if that's even possible with a newborn around. (laughs) I couldn't agree with you more. I thought that was worth sharing nonetheless, because the stats are abnormally low. Not that I'm some prolific writer or anything like that, but I definitely write, on average, a fair amount more than is going to be reflected in these past few months. But without further ado, and or gilding the lily, as they say, here we go. October 2020, I wrote six, yes, single digit six, out of the 31 days of the month for a 19.4% writing rate. And just when you thought it couldn't get any worse, in November 2020, I wrote four out of the 30 days of the month for a 13.3% writing rate. But then I picked myself up by my bootstraps just a smidge, and I wrote in December of 2020 a whopping five out of the 31 days of the month for a despicable 16.1% writing rate. Now, before that slide in the last quarter of the year, I was on track for having a fairly decent writing average for the, for the year. But with that, It brought my 2020 yearly writing stat percentage at 42.1%. Now, January 2021, fuck, 2020 sucked, right? Global pandemics, divisive politics, Tony's writing stats, Jesus. But in 2021, as things around the house begin to gel a little bit more and we fall into a bit more of a routine and the baby's sleeping a little bit more, I was able to wedge in a few more writing sessions. Still not great, but definitely a step up from the previous three months. And in January 2021, I wrote 13 out of the 31 days of January for a writing percentage of 41.9%. That's me walking the plank and keeping myself honest. Now for this episode's writing tip. It's coming from 
one of my favorite sources that I've used on here before to share writing and related tips with you guys, which is K.M. Wyland's Helping Writers Become Authors. And it's a guest post that she had by Christina K. posted on January 11th, 2021. And it's titled, How to Start, Build, and Grow Your Email List. Now, it's not one of those traditional writing tips that I share, which are more like related to craft and structure, but rather more of the business side, if you will, of writing and definitely for self-publishers related to marketing. One of the best ways for writers and really for any business to optimize their chances for selling their product, in this case books, is to have a direct-to-consumer relationship, to have a client list, if you will, a way that you can directly communicate with potential buyers, customers, readers, without the need to advertise through a Facebook or an Amazon, Instagram, Twitter, etc. BookBub, Amazon ads, Facebook ads, all of which are great. This is just another way to go about that marketing, which is a complement to those things. And again, it's not reliant on an outside source or an outside service. As you all know, I have the Spun Today newsletter, which is my email list. And if you didn't know, you should know. And you should go sign up now. It's completely free. SpunToday.com forward slash subscribe. But yeah, I'm going to share a few excerpts from this post. And as always, we'll link to it in the episode notes. And I definitely recommend you check it out for its full context. So one of the first steps that they go over is establishing what your author email is going to be. You can obviously use like an at Gmail, for example, like I use spuntoday at gmail.com. But if you want to go a little bit more professional, a little bit more polished, which I should eventually graduate up to, you can get the extension that matches your website. For example, my website is spuntoday.com. I can get an email that would be like Tony at spuntoday.com, for example, or, or info at spuntoday.com. And to do so, you would have to, you know, purchase the domain. And the example that I'm using with my website would be spuntoday.com, which is the domain that I own, which I purchased through Squarespace. But you can also use a service like uh, Google Domains or GoDaddy, etc. And then they have a service usually for around $5 per month to get that extension email. And it definitely gives you a bit more of a professional look. Next, you'd have to pick your email hosting service. So in essence, you don't want just a shitload of people just emailing you and saying, you know, add me to your mailing list and then creating like an Excel spreadsheet or something like that with all email addresses, which I guess you could, but there are services that do this type of thing for you. And you're going to, it'll behoove you to use one of these services. Like we'll get into in, in a later tip here, not just for the collecting of email addresses, but for the maintaining and also the ease of being able to blast everybody at once. And also once somebody signs up, send them what it is that you're giving them for free automatically. Now you can use services. They list here a few. The one that I personally use is MailChimp. Shout out to the Serial Podcast, by the way. The first season with uh, the Adnan Syed case, one of the sponsors for the series was MailChimp and they had this like MailChimp commercial over and over again. And I was learning about you know, the need to have an email list back then. And I was just just like, why not? Let me give them a shot. And I did. And I I have absolutely zero complaints. It works flawlessly for me. I use it literally every single week. And it's also free for the first 2000 email addresses that you get, or rather 2000 people that you get to sign up to your mailing list, which is pretty cool. And then after that, they have like, you know, tiered offerings. So yeah, that's the the second step. Pick your email hosting service. Then create your lead magnet. Now, this is what I was referring to when I said something that you're going to give folks for free. Now, what you give away for free is completely up to you. And they give some examples here. They say it's usually like a downloadable PDF that you offer folks and give a list of some common freebies that other authors, in this case, give out in exchange for the person's email address, which are the first two chapters of your upcoming release, the first two chapters of a backlist book, a free entire copy of a backlist book, a character interview 
with any of your lead characters, a behind-the-scenes sneak peek into your upcoming releases, etc. So use your imagination. I, for example, went the route of... Well, I kind of combined two different things because I do do a free entire copy of of a backlist book, which folks listening, if you go to sponsorate.com forward slash books, you can get a free digital copy of Fractal or a free digital copy of Make Way For You. Go in there into each of those individual pages, either or drop in your email address and you get that freebie for me in exchange for your email address. And you also automatically get my once weekly newsletter, which I send out every Monday at noon. Now, for folks not interested in the books, I went the route, like uh, I was saying, of Tim Ferriss's newsletter, Five Bullet Friday, which is one of the like most successful newsletters, period, in terms of not just subscribers, but activity and click-through of actual subscribers. And I decided to put out something of what I consider value. Hopefully, my subscribers do as well, and my future subscribers will as well. And I share five things that I'm into. I share a photograph of the week, a podcast of the week, a video of the week, a quote of the week, and a word of the week. And for folks, like I was saying, that aren't interested in the books, they can just subscribe directly for the newsletter at sponsor.com forward slash subscribe. Now, the dope thing about having the hosting service like MailChimp, for example, is that you can set it up so that you create your lead magnet, right? Your PDF or your free book or whatever it is that that you're going to give away for free, a video, a clip, whatever it is, and you set it up within MailChimp, which they'll walk you through or whichever other hosting platform you choose to use so that whenever somebody signs up for your newsletter or your email list, for example, going to sponsorate.com forward slash subscribe, dropping in their email address, they'll automatically get an email that's generated from MailChimp in your name, obviously. It comes from quote unquote sponsorate at gmail.com in my case with that freebie attached with that PDF, for example. So if you get a thousand people that sign up within a minute, you don't have to manually send out a thousand emails, for example. It'll all be automated for you. Then a tip that they give here is that, you know, once you have your subscribers, you know, keep them warm, basically. Don't just let them go cold and only email them once a year or once every two years when you've written a new book that you want to send to them or whatever the case is. Decide on a specific schedule of how you're going to email them. And there are tons of different approaches to this. There's like marketing funnels that say, okay, on Monday at this time is the peak time for people to pay attention for this type of content. And you email them with this type of email and set that up to send out automatically three days after somebody subscribes. And then two days after that, hit them up with a follow-up. And, you know, you can go deep into this, deep into the rabbit hole, but in from a marketing perspective. But on a basic level, the tip here is, you know, choose what frequency of contacting you're actually going to keep up with if you want to make your newsletter a once a month thing a once a week thing a bi-weekly thing pick that do that you know similar to a podcast you know pick a schedule stick to it and be consistent so for example my newsletter for my subscribers goes out once a week every monday at noon i picked that because initially i had like this kind of branding quote-unquote branding idea to name it the midday monday boost letter you know send it on midday on Mondays at noon to boost everybody's Monday because Mondays fucking suck, right? So I'll give people a nice photograph to look at, a podcast recommendation, a cool video about something interesting that I found on the internet, etc. And then I later just renamed it the Sponsor Day Newsletter, but still send it out every Monday at noon. And that's my way of, one, providing something of, again, what I consider valuable in, in some way or interesting at the least or a nice pastime or nice to have while having the dual purpose of keeping folks warm so that when I have a book that I come out with, I have a hopefully growing a growing audience of folks that are hopefully going to be interested in my shit. And I can email them and say, hey, I got this book coming out, at which point I might want to offer it to some subscribers for free in exchange for like reviews, for example, or just for being subscribers. Or I want to give them a discounted price if they pre-order the book, 
etc. You know, you can think of a bunch of different applications at that point. And again, this is not specific for writing. I'm just, you know, coming at this obviously from the writing lens. But if you're a comic, for example, and you want to have a, a list of folks interested in your comedy and for your freebie, you decide to give them a recorded clip of a joke or a montage of clips of your favorite clips from being in clubs that maybe you've self-recorded or something like that. And you give that to them for free when they sign up to your mailing list. And then it's folks that whenever you're, you're on tour doing your thing, you can, you know, send an email blast out and be like, Hey, this weekend I'm going to be at Gotham or whatever, you know, you could do this type of thing as well. If you own a restaurant and have a way for customers to sign up when they go eat or would have you and let them know about new special menu items that come out or send them coupons for free drinks at brunch and, you know, get them to, to come back or something like that. But yeah, that is the writing related marketing tip that I wanted to share with you folks today. Again, it can be found on Cam Wyland's website, helping writers become authors. And it was a guest post posted by Christine K on January 11th, 2021, and I will link to it in the episode notes. What I've been reading. I've been reading Yuval Nora Harari's book, Sapiens. Now, this was a book that I got sick and tired of being recommended and being referenced to in a bunch of different unrelated podcasts that I listened to. And it seemed to be on like everybody's top 10 books to read or not everybody's but like notably like it was on bill gates you know books you know must read books for you know how the, they do like top five books or top 10 books that i read this year or whatever like obama does it mark zuckerberg bill gates like a bunch of people do it and it was on actually all three of their recommendations and it just kept popping up within my orbit so much that i decided to give it a go and i read it or listened to the audiobook rather and it's pretty interesting stuff. I'm going to share a couple of excerpts or, or clips that are going to be a bit random, but just things that resonated with me and I found fascinating. But first, I'm going to share a couple of excerpts from the official synopsis of the book. So you get an idea of what it's about. Quote, Homo sapiens rules the world because it is the only animal that can believe in things that exist purely in its own imagination, such as gods, states, money, and human rights. Starting from this provocative idea, Sapiens goes on to tell the histories of our species from a completely fresh perspective. It explains that money is the most pluralistic system of mutual trust ever devised, that capitalism is the most successful religion ever invented. That the treatment of animals in modern agriculture is probably the worst crime in history. And that even though we are far more powerful than our ancestors, we aren't much happier. By combining profound insights with a remarkably vivid language, Sapiens acquired cult status among diverse audiences, captivating teenagers as well as university professors animal rights activists, alongside government ministers. By 2018, over 10 million copies have been sold, and the book has been translated into nearly 50 languages. How's that for book sales? That was actually directly from the Sapiens dedicated website, and this is a partial excerpt from the Amazon listing, both of which I will link to in the episode notes for your convenience. Quote, from renowned historian comes a groundbreaking narrative of humanity's creation and evolution, a number one international bestseller that explores the ways in which biology and history have defined us and enhanced our understanding of what it means to be human. 100,000 years ago, at least six different species of humans inhabited the earth. I bet you guys didn't know that. I definitely didn't. <laughs> chalk that up to the public school system in New York City. <laughs> Yet today, there's only one. Homo sapiens. What happened to the others? And what may happen to us? The first thing I found fascinating was related to agriculture. 
and how 90% of all the food that feeds humanity today in 2021 comes from a handful of foods that were cultivated thousands of years ago by our ancestors. Just a handful. I thought that was a stunning figure. Anyway, folks, that's a boatload of clips that I shared with you all from Yuval Noah Harari's book, Sapiens, A Brief History of Humankind. I recommend it and we'll link to it in the episode notes. Check it out. And last but not least, I want to share a free writing piece of mine that I will directly link to in the episode notes, but that you all can navigate to by going to spuntoday.com forward slash free writing. There you'll find all my free writing pieces, including this one, which was posted onto my site on February 3rd, 2021. And the title is This Fleeting Life That We Live. It'll absorb and dilute you out of existence. This free writing piece is based on a quote that I heard during John Lewis's memorial. And the quote is, quote, Do as much as you can, as often as you can, for as long as you can. End quote. And to that I wrote this. I don't remember who said this during John Lewis's memorial or if they were quoting him or attributing this statement to his legacy, but it is fitting, isn't it? A lifelong activist and champion of moral causes. He found his purpose early on in life. What a blessing. When you find yours, make sure you know it, honor it. Don't take it for granted because this fleeting life that we live It'll absorb and dilute you out of existence while you're under the impression that you have all of the time in the world. Don't let the, quote, as you can turn into, quote, when you want. And I wrote that on Saturday, August 22nd, 2020 at 12.02 a.m. And rest in peace, John Lewis, by the way. For those of you that don't know, John Lewis was a lifelong activist from a young age. He walked the bridge at Selma alongside Martin Luther King. He was beaten several times by authorities into the hospital. He was a community organizer and a congressman for many, many years, where he continued championing moral causes through legislation. And I truly do believe, like it says in this piece, that it is a blessing to find what your purpose is, especially early on in life, to just be passionate about something, have something driving you. There's a lot of people, especially young people, myself included when I was younger, just like aimlessly going through life, like waiting for life to happen while it's already happening, or just like going through the motions, don't really have something to, you know, quote unquote, live for or that drives them. And I truly think it is a blessing once you find that thing, which is why I say that piece of when you find yours, your blessing, your thing, your purpose, make sure you know it too. Because if you don't open your eyes and realize, damn, this thing that I'm kind of sort of good at, that I don't really pay attention to because I take it for granted, that's my thing. I should double down on that and really cherish and, and nurture it. From this piece, I also like the line from it that I made the title, obviously, which is, this fleeting life that we live, it'll absorb and dilute you out of existence. Because it's fucking true, man. Life is short. We had that idea, that sentiment amplified even more this past year in 2020 with the pandemic and losing loved ones. And not just with the pandemic, but just in general in life, right? People lose people every day to cancer, heart disease, accidents, violence. And lastly, where I say at the end, don't let the quote as you can turn into quote when you want. I'm referring to the as you can from the first piece of the quote, which is do as much as you can. Don't let that become do it when you want. Because as my writing stats from the past few months show, I didn't want to or want to enough fairly often. And when you do that, you kind of fall into a rut. And wind up not doing shit. And before you know it, life passes you by. And that's a nice full circle, folks. I think I'll end it there. Thank you for 
listening, checking out episode 173 of the Spun Today podcast. I really appreciate it. I hope you do subscribe to my newsletter at spuntoday.com forward slash subscribe so we can stay in touch. Again, if you want a free copy of one of my books, you can get that at spuntoday.com forward slash books. And hope you stick around to listen to a few different ways you can help support this show if you so choose. Peace. Hey folks, Tony here. If you're enjoying the show, do me a favor. Rate and review it on iTunes, Spotify, Stitcher, or wherever it is that you listen to your podcasts. If you'd like to help out the show in other ways, I'll give you a one-stop shop of sorts to do so. Go to spuntoday.com forward slash support. That's where you'll find a ton of different ways to help support this show, such as shopping on Amazon. If you do any shopping on Amazon, like most of the world, I ask that you do so by clicking on any of the Amazon banners on my website. This will take you to Amazon where you can do your shopping like you normally do. It will not cost you anything extra, but I will get credit for driving traffic to their website. Speaking of Amazon, they fulfill a bunch of the merch that I have available. If you go to spuntoday.com forward slash support, you're going to find a brand new merch section where you'll find the iconic Podcasts vs. Anybody Super Soft Premium Cotton T-Shirt. You'll also find the legendary Spun Today Podcast tee, which is in the style of the New York City Plastic Thank You Bags logo. For my fellow Dominicans out there, I have a dope Dominican Escudo t-shirt. You know where the Lacoste or Polo shirts have their little logo? Picture that, but instead, a Dominican Escudo. All available now in a variety of different colors for men and women in all sizes. In the Spun Today merch section, which again is at spuntoday.com forward slash support, you'll also find a bunch of other t-shirt designs, long sleeve t-shirts, short sleeve t-shirts, color changing coffee mugs, and much, much more. Check out all the merch at spuntoday.com forward slash support. All of my short stories can be found at spuntoday.com forward slash short stories. The free writing pieces that I read, share, and review during the free writing session episodes of this show can be found at spuntoday.com forward slash free writing. There you can read all the pieces that made the podcast as well as tons and tons of others. My books are available in any digital format of your choice, whether it's Kindle, Apple's iBooks, Kobo, you name it. They're also available in paperback. You can check them out at spuntoday.com forward slash books. My debut novel, Fractal, is a sci-fi time travel story of a group of righteous travelers that attempt to right the wrongs of the injustices of the past. My nonfiction, Make Way For You, is a collection of tips for getting out of your own way. So if you need some motivation, inspiration, and a good old-fashioned kick in the ass, that'll be the read for you. Again, go to spuntoday.com forward slash books or search for those titles on Amazon. Another great and free way that you can help support this show is by subscribing to my newsletter by going to spuntoday.com forward slash subscribe. You'll get a photo, podcast, video, quote, and word of the week every single Monday at noon. What else do you have to look forward to on a Monday? Plus, you'll be the first to know whenever I publish a new book. And if for whatever reason you choose to, you can unsubscribe at any time. Go to spuntoday.com forward slash subscribe, drop in your email address, and you'll get the very next one. At spuntoday.com forward slash support, you'll also find links to my Patreon, Ko-fi, and PayPal donation pages. Patreon and Ko-fi allow you to make recurring donations per episode, and you even get some bonus content for doing so. PayPal allows you to make a one-time donation to the show for my fellow writers and creatives out there a really cool way for you to be featured on this show is to respond to my five question spun today questionnaire i'll read your responses on a future episode of the show and share them with the spun today community think about it if your responses could potentially spark inspiration in someone else why not share that to do so go to spun today.com forward slash questionnaire don't forget to follow me on Twitter and Instagram 
at Spun Today on both those platforms. Check out and like the Spun Today Facebook page at facebook.com forward slash Spun Today. I'd really appreciate it if you subscribe to the Spun Today YouTube page. Just search for Spun Today on YouTube or click on any of the YouTube icons on my website. There you'll not only get the full versions of this podcast, but you'll also get bonus content like shortened episode clips and much, much more. And as always, folks, substitute the mysticism with hard work and start taking steps in the general direction of your dreams. Thanks for listening. I love you, Aiden. I love you, Daddy.